Welcome back, everyone, to another fantastic podcast that, again, has no spanking of any kind because we are anime characters, and anime characters don't do that, I guess. It, every yes, time. Yeah. Every time. It, it kind of uh, started off as a joke on episode one where I said spanking new episode, but then Ducky said, like, oh, we don't do that here. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> kind all of, right uh, kind of an inside <laughs> joke but you know but it's very cryptid <laughs> right but for those who are new to our podcast we pretty much just talk about everything pop culture that ranges from anime video games all the way to cosplaying and maybe some other stuff like how welcome to the nhk is probably the most underrated show ever i'm your host Jaden day zero and joining me this afternoon is your co-host the lucky duelist Hi guys, I'm back. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, thanks for sticking around for this long. We have a very special <laughs> guest today, and I'm sure you guys will love it. And I am yeah. in Day Zero. You guys are probably already aware of what I do, but it's basically the cringy kid or YouTube creator <laughs> who makes these um, <sighs> how should I say, yandere content or whatever. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> but today, we have a very special guest with us on this podcast. Uh, she is known for her awesome anime YouTube videos, like her top 10 romance anime shows, and her analytical video about Devil Man Crybaby. Would you like to introduce yourself? Alrighty, sup everyone, I'm your female otaku, my name is Sloan, and I run the Sloan the Female Otaku channel, where I make videos all on otaku culture, be it anime, manga, cosplay, conventions, all sorts of stuff. I do it all. Uh, and yeah, I've been going on for quite some time, and we're, we're getting close to 40k, so Ooh, you want nice. to hop on over. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, we're so close. <laughs> I'm like, come on, right there. <laughs> I, I have a question before we go any further. Yeah. So if you, your name's Sloan. Yes. Do you have a sibling called Fasted? Do I have a sibling called... What? Like, if you're Sloan, do you have something called Fasten? Or is it... Or is it never mind. <laughs> Are you saying faster? Like, like, like slow and fast? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's a first. Normally when people try to poke fun at my name, they'll, they'll usually say a small Sloan of a million dollars. Oh my god. That's lame. That's <laughs> so lame. I had that for quite some time. <laughs> the most American joke. <laughs> It is. Pretty much. I hate your country. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, we're trying this new thing where, um, to break the ice a little bit, we either tell a horrible dad joke, kind of like what Ducky just did, or, um, you know, just <laughs> kind of like about me questions to break the ice a bit. Um, so I'll let Ducky take care of this part of the podcast. Okay. So there are six questions. Pick a number between one and six. Uh, okay, let's go with uh, four. There was a four. If you could be reincarnated <laughs> as one animal, what would you choose? A cat. Noise. That was so straightforward. That was yep. so... <laughs> well done. Is there any reason <laughs> why? Uh, well, cats, man, they just, they just chill, live in life. I mean, mm -hmm. if you poke fun at them, they will attack, so I'm like, cool. But overall, mm -hmm. they're just trying to, they're just trying to be, alright? They're really light on their feet, they're just, they're just relaxing, they're just floating along. It's great. I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard a thing once where, like, if a cat's owner dies, they will eat it immediately, but, I'll, but a dog will wait a while, or, like, some, the other way around, so. Yikes. I've never heard of that. I don't know. I don't have a cat <laughs> myself, be, so. I wouldn't, I don't, I mean, I wish I had a cat, but I don't want to die with a cat. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Anyway. The big question here, um, that I kind of want to ask you, mm -hmm. out of everything, like, you know, just normal hobbies and stuff. Why, why choose YouTube? Uh, so it actually it goes all the way back nine years ago when oh Sloane was but a wee thirteen-year-old <laughs> girl. <laughs> uh, for context, I, I I'm 22 now, mm -hmm. uh, so this is like back in 2011. And uh, my first channel, my first mm -hmm. YouTube channel, uh, is called Ivy Vega Eight, and I made movies using Monster High dolls. Because I had no friends for actors. 
So <laughs> I, oh, I would use cool. my dolls. Yeah, I'd use mm-hmm. my dolls uh, in like stop motion movies and stuff. And I'd voice mm-hmm. them and everything. I'd pose them and all that. I'd make like epic sagas. It was crazy. I got like a, thousands of views on those too, which is just wild. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. But, but of course, after a while, I had to stop playing with the dolls. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, what can I do now? I know. Why not just at least practice on my editing? So mm-hmm. I practiced my editing with, uh, and, I, and that's when I was like getting super, super into anime. So mm-hmm. I was making top 10 videos. And I just so happened to make an, uh, a top 10 Yandere characters video yeah. just around the same time as Yandere Simulator was booming. And that's how I got my, my start on the Slow the Female Chak- Taku channel. So, yeah. It's all coming together. Yeah. Right. She got popular around the time of Yandere Simulator. You know what makes Yandere content? That's oh my a, God. it's funny because like I believe um people who I don't know if it's just me or not, but people who actually started making like any kind of Yandere related content during that time when Mark mm-hmm. Markiplier and all the big YouTubers were playing um the simulator game, I feel like a lot of us got like a big boost in like followers because even I that's how I started like oh. uh, I was doing some um just like english covers of anime openings and stuff but then out of mm. nowhere i i decided to do like a, a yandere stories thing because like I, I didn't see anybody do it so i was like i should try it and plus it was because i was watching um mirai nikki or future diary uh, yeah you know, yeah you know the the classic <laughs> the classic mm-hmm. one and that kind of inspired me to make my own story and i posted that during that time that you were you like i think it was 2016 wasn't it when that when Yandere stuff was exploding, was it? I don't uh, know. Well, for me, I started uploading videos. It was late uh, 2014. Mm-hmm. Like, my first two videos were uploaded between, like, November, December 2014. I think I uploaded mine, like, late 2015. So, yeah, it's, okay. I guess it was around that range. Mm-hmm. And in that video, for some reason, exploded like like crazy. I didn't think yeah. it was going to, but I guess because of the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, the, the trend. I guess it mm. it make kind of makes sense. It's kind of yep. funny. Uh, well, when you started YouTube, like, did anybody in particular like inspired you, or did, is this something like you uh, just did yourself or inspired yourself, um, or is this something you just always wanted to do after doing those videos that you mentioned? Uh, if we're talking inspiration, I guess we got to go all the way back to uh, when I was a wee lass in middle <laughs> school, and because I, <laughs> uh, uh, I saw other people making movies with their monster high dolls so i was like oh sick i I could do the same thing so so that that's how that's how the monster high stuff started but uh it was through the the monster high um videos when i realized that i wanted to work in the film industry Mm -hmm. and even right now i'm actually in a a, a trade school for film because i want to be uh yeah yeah i want to be an editor whether it be editing Mm -hmm. film music videos commercials trailers i i love it all uh so that's the main reason why I just still keep up with my channel is mm-hmm. because I just love editing that much. And I like being my own boss too. So that's great. Oh yeah. That, that's a great feeling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So like you did videos with Monster High Doll, right? Mm-hmm. In Monster yeah. High had a TV show. So technically was that fan fiction? Huh, you know what? Yes. I'd say <laughs> yes. I had different AUs and everything. I, Cause I literally had a, a, a spy <laughs> AU and I, I had like a i had a i made my own version of america's next top model i called it america's next top monster uh <laughs> nice I, I had i had like a sci-fi crossover where they like fought aliens and stuff like that, that <laughs> that's sounds wild. amazing that's yeah. <laughs> when was the moment when you decided that yeah i want to do anime content on youtube uh i guess the main thing that kept motivating for me to keep doing it was the fact that I was getting views. And I was mm-hmm. like, whoa, okay. okay. And, you know, I, I kept up with a bunch of anti-tubers anyway mm-hmm. for, like, the past two years already. Like, like, at that time, it was, like, been two years of me being re- heavily involved in the anti-tuber community. So I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I can, I can do this on my own. If people like my Yandere video, then I guess they'll like more stuff that I'll make. Mm-hmm. Like, so, which, yeah. which anti-tubers were you following back then? Or if you are still following them? Yeah, I still follow them. Uh, Gigguk, of course. Oh, Glass nice. Reflection. Nice. Yeah, and I'm actually friends with Glass Reflection, which still blows my mind, actually. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, we've been friends for like four years and stuff. It's great. Um, and uh, Chibi Reviews, who I'm also friends with. And uh, mm-hmm. who else was I keeping up with that? Those are like the main three there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Misty Cronexia 
who were we're acquaintances. We like chat through Twitter from time to time. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, everybody starts small, right? And eventually mm-hmm. you get to that point where the people that you looked up to becomes your friends. Like, how, how did that, or how do you feel about that? Like, like the people you watch constantly, then you suddenly become their friends. And like, because for some people it could like be like, you know, mind blowing, but I don't know. Yeah, um, like, um, when Arcada from Glass Reflections first uh, followed me back, mm-hmm. which this I was a senior in high school at the time. So this was 2016, mm. and I flipped my shit. Oh my mm. god! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? What? Why? Why? What do you do? Why are you following me and stuff? And he was like, Oh, I'm just trying to be a good senpai. And I was like, Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, but since then, we we've met up twice. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we we we've hung out, we've uh, chatted before and stuff. Like we're just. We're just really chill. Every so often, I'll still be like, I'll I'll check Twitter to make sure that he still follows me. I'm like, yo, am I dreaming still? Or is this? Like... <laughs> nice. I do that with all my friends. Like, like even mm-hmm. with um Connor from Sea Dog VA. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been buddies for a solid year and a half now, and, and I'll still check. Like, hello, like we're we're still we're still mutuals. Okay. We're still friends, okay, right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Like, yeah, being friends with all those p- big people because they now they're like huge because like back mm. then they they only had like a couple thousand like i remember when sea dog had like what hundred twenty thousand and something and now he's like yeah. almost a mil that's pretty cool though. yeah yeah no he surpassed a mil i believe oh man dang mm. i'm not surprised i mean he's making mm. pretty good stuff right now so so you said you did editing and stuff like that so mm. when did you realize that that was something that you really loved doing uh it was through the monster high videos mm-hmm. well actually technically through the monster high videos i originally said that i wanted to be a film director right and then my parents put me in this uh special program uh for um film students in high school like it was this program for um over at the nyu new york university mm-hmm. for high schoolers they chose 15 high schoolers to take college level classes for mm-hmm. free and I was one of the lucky 15 to be chosen. Oh, dang. Uh, nice. Yeah, it was super sick. But then through that program, I realized, man, I hate directing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's what, like, I'm kind of curious then, like, what's so bad about directing? Like, um, I don't know. I technically I still do directing when mm-hmm. I uh, direct my cosplay music videos and people hire me to to make like music videos for them. Like, I have to do it all. Mm-hmm. But the thing with the directing is that like, you have to just you have like a whole crew and you gotta be the overseer for everything like the, the you gotta go on the actors you gotta go on like the script meetings the the meetings for um, like the background music the meetings for I sound and, and then like revisions and then props and things like that of course you have like your assistant director but mm-hmm. still you're like you gotta be informed on all this stuff and you gotta make the big decisions like oh we we don't have any more of this chair what should we use instead and it's like oh i don't know what chair we should use <laughs> it's just the whole mm-hmm. thing do you find it like Editing's more do you find it more stressful than um actually editing because I know sometimes editing can also be stressful but I don't know too in terms of your experiences. You know, honestly, this is just a personal preference cuz so mm-hmm. many people like I ask a bunch of YouTubers, no matter mm-hmm. what community they're from, most of them will say that they just can't stand editing. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, listen, the more footage you give me, the better. Uh, I'll go crazy with it. I'll add a bunch of extra stuff that doesn't even need to be there. But you know what? I'll put it in anyway because it's fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that since I had the patience to make stop motion videos, I have the patience to do almost anything. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was your next program after your the first one? Or your so yeah yeah, yeah. the ba- the basic standard mm-hmm. start out man the basic origin stories I, I started off with a uh, Windows Movie Maker for the Monster High videos mm-hmm. uh, then I got Sony Vegas but uh, of course Sony Vegas will crash on you every two seconds ah yeah so. yeah You're kidding. <laughs> yeah uh, then I was having um I was having like computer and laptop troubles uh, so mm-hmm. then when I finally got a new laptop uh it, you know it automatically comes with iMovie. Mm-hmm. So I I've been using iMovie for years. I still use it, but I also use Adobe Premiere. Uh, I use mm-hmm. Adobe Premiere for the harder, more complex videos, and I'll use iMovie for the the simple edits that doesn't need to have too much crazy stuff going on. Do you find yourself like transitioning? Because I know when I edit my videos, I use Sony Vegas as well as like Premiere and like 
After Effects and all that stuff, and I just transition mm. between both of them at the same time. Like for After Effects, I just render it, then I transfer it over to Sony Vegas and like render or do the final render through there. Do you ever find yourself doing that, or is it just depending on the video you're making? Actually, um, one time, I don't know, a couple times, I edited the audio for like a collab video in iMovie, mm-hmm. and then I moved it over to Premiere and then added in the clips. Mm-hmm. Do you ever find that uh, like time yeah. consuming or anything like that? No, not really, honestly. I don't think it takes that long. But then again, I, I've been editing for so long, so oh, <laughs> I yeah. get things done super fast now. What's your What's your setup like? I'm assuming it'd be like a high end PC since you're using Adobe programs. Actually, no. I just have my little old MacBook Air mm-hmm. from 2013. <laughs> oh dang! Yep. Nice. Yeah. It says a lot about Apple products. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. surprised it's still running just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ever overheat or anything like that? Uh, yeah, in fact, I won't be surprised if during this call it'll start screaming. <laughs> oh, man. It'll blow, it'll <laughs> blow up. Rip. <laughs> so as you're doing YouTube, like, because um, I know uh, there's been a lot of talk th- throughout the YouTube community where, like, um, mental health is a big issue. Um, and I know some YouTubers, um, it really affects them. And what about, like, in your case, as you're doing these videos, um, do you ever find it like it's affecting you mentally? Uh, you know, I switch, um, from problems to problems, not, Mm -hmm. not often, but like, you know, every so often, like every couple of months, I'm like, oh man, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because like, in fact, earlier today, I tweeted out saying, Hey guys, can you tell me to stop overworking myself? (laughs) Mm-hmm. I, I I just been laying on too many projects at a time. Like uh, like like I said to you guys before we even started. Like I've been editing all day, and then I gotta edit some more after this. Like that's I've been working on three separate video projects. Oh, uh, and yeah, yeah. And then I have to prepare for specific tweets and specific uh, content that I have to make for sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I was I was late on one of them. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I confused the date. I'm so sorry. And G Kids was all like, oh, no worries. Like, you're good, Sloan. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're fine. Um, so, That's yeah. Nice of them. Just, yeah. You know, I've been working with G Kids for two years and a half now. Mm-hmm. So they, they understand. Like, we're, we're friends. Uh, like, like, they know me and I know, like, their crew and stuff. Like, we're good. Mm hmm. But man, it, it can certainly be exhausting. Like I've definitely lost sleep from just writing a script because I couldn't just fall asleep knowing the ideas that I had in my head. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I have to put this down now or I'm going to forget. So, yeah. <laughs> so you said script. So I'm assuming you script a lot of your stuff. You don't do you, like mm-hmm. improv anything or anything like that. Uh, I've recently started to bring back improv a little bit mm-hmm. uh it's more as like a, a filler video for my next large project which would be a video essay the video essays take up a lot of time mm-hmm. and i don't want to be like a monthly uploader so i'm like okay let me let me add in something a little fun here something on the spot mm-hmm. like earlier today i uploaded a rant video and like it literally in the first 30 seconds i said like sup everyone i'm your female taku and i just thought of this idea three minutes ago there is no script let's go <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dang. It was great. I was just like ranting for like 16 minutes. It was wild. <laughs> Do you ever? It, that, that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it's a, for me. I I find it very amazing how like how some people like yourself is able to like rant on about a specific topic or anything because like for me, um, when I do like any kind of improv or any of that kind of stuff i always have to scrap it because i find myself like getting off topic or rambling about random stuff do you do you ever feel like um when you're doing improv that oh i i I got off topic too much so i need to scrap the whole thing or you you just like lose motivation to do it because of that i don't really scrap the whole thing but Mm -hmm. they're like when i was making the video I recorded for 16 minutes, but mm-hmm. in the end, what, what was uploaded was 12 minutes of footage. So nice. I did go off topic, and then there were some things that I felt like didn't really make sense to the point I was trying to make. So I was like, okay, we can right. just cut that. Mm-hmm. But a good chunk of the video is, is still there, you know? 
I feel like I got my point across. And even after when I finished recording, mm -hmm. I had two extra thoughts that I was like, oh, man, I got to put that in the video. So then I, I went back and turned my camera on and I recorded again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Do you find yourself like improving more or is that something you're slowly trying to get into? Or as before doing um, some of your videos, did you like script everything before uh, doing them or I don't know? So actually, when I first started out mm -hmm. uh, with the AnyTube stuff, I um I did not script at all, not even for my my top ten videos. I just kind of mm -hmm. said what was on my mind, and then I started making for first all like two years and a half. I was making episode reviews, which is tiring as all heck. I do not recommend. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it did help keep a schedule, uh -huh. which is how I got a, a good amount of my fan bases because they they knew exactly when I was going to upload and stuff mm -hmm. uh, each each day each week. But like I said, it's, it's really draining, especially if you have like multiple anime episodes to review in a day. Like that's the worst. But uh, I then moved from not like having a script mm -hmm. to having notes. So I'd keep a notebook and I'd, I'd watch like the episode and then I'd, I'd write little notes here and there. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I was like, OK, what if I start like scripting together my top 10 videos and my discussion videos? And that worked out really well, too, because I was able to put down all my thoughts mm -hmm. and I wasn't able to have like awkward breaths. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like that kind of sounds like what you would do in school where they would have you watch a movie or something. You have to like take down notes of what happened in the scene or what do you think happened there? Um, does it ever mm -hmm. feel like mm -hmm. like uh, kind of a, like a job, too much of a job rather than something you want to do? Uh, I mean, when you're... The, the episode views, re reviews definitely felt like a chore. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I stopped making them for multiple reasons. One, I was exhausted. Two, at the time, I was having really bad stomach problems. Uh, okay. uh, and, uh, yeah, no, that's really it. Yeah, I was, I, it wasn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was exhausting. It was a chore, and I, I hated it. Like, same thing when I, I also used, I then added, like, reaction videos, too. I stopped doing that because that just wasn't fun anymore. But a lot of that had to do with the comment section. They were just so like, hey, why don't you show footage? And I'm like, um, I don't want to get a copyright strike. <laughs> I'm not going to show uh, the yeah. episode footage. <laughs> I don't see how some people can get away with that stuff. But yeah. I don't know. You did mention like you kind of felt stressed a little bit when like this constant flow. Do you, so I'm assuming you feel a lot of pressure from from your viewers to keep on pumping this content or i don't know does it ever get to you or get under get under your skin not really not like i, I never really feel pressure from fans it'll usually just be on myself mm -hmm. uh, i tend to overthink things but i i learned a long time ago that you do not need to apologize to your fans if you're late on a video and this and that because mm -hmm. most of them whenever i when, when i used to do that sort of thing back in when i was making when i was first starting out in high school like mm -hmm. oh no i forgot to go like, get the episode of re review out today i'm so sorry guys they don't say like hey sloan it's fine you don't have to apologize that was the main comment you don't have to apologize that would be the majority of responses so after a while i was like okay i'm gonna take that to heart i do not need to <laughs> apologize <laughs> and so i still follow that like even sometimes my friends will tweet out like oh i'm so sorry i haven't uploaded in months and i'm just, and, and i'll respond to them i'll say hey you don't have to apologize your fans will understand Mm -hmm. so yeah just you know, sometimes they, your fans know what's up of course you have a few dicks here and there they're like hey where's the episode review oh my but, god but, yeah know. dude i get that all the time <laughs> oh my god except for you jay they don't ask for episode review yeah they ask, they ask for all that stuff yeah my i guess i guess i don't know do you do you feel like you're uh i don't know because i i've seen your videos and stuff and you seem to have a lot of variety of different kinds of videos. Um, mm -hmm. Is are you like heading towards a direction that you're gonna just make this type of content, or are you trying to like vary out your content when you're doing YouTube? Because there, there's some people that find that a specific content works better than the others. But there's mm -hmm. you know, for me, I try to you know, mix it up a bit because you know, after a while, it can get like boring or just you gotta get tired of making that same stuff. Yeah, no, that's actually what happened because I was, uh, I do have a variety and I still have mm -hmm. a variety, but about a month or so ago, I was like, even with the variety that I have, I, I want to add something else or I want to change this. 
-hmm. So then last month I did some uh, rebranding. I added cartoons mm -hmm. to the channel. Mm -hmm. And I uh, also started a um, uh, manga podcast. So that mm -hmm. was a really great mix to add. I'm having a blast with them. And everyone else seems to be having a blast with them too. Of course, I still make uh, streams on Fate Grand Order. I still make my video essays. And when cons mm -hmm. come back, I'll be going back to making cosplay music videos and con vlogs and stuff like that. Uh, I, got, uh, I don't really make too much top 10 videos, but when I have the chance, I will. But yeah, you know, I just I just upload whatever the heck I want, whatever motivates me, because um, there's there's some topics for that I'm like, oh, man, this is a great idea. Let me write a script. And then the next mm -hmm. day I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. But then, <laughs> but then there's some days where I will continue to work on that script for a solid like week or mm -hmm. maybe even mm -hmm. the entirety of the day. And then I'll, I'll get my clips ready and I'll just only work on that thing for that week. So I just go with whatever my mood is. I don't want to force anything because then it will come out forced and I know I won't like it. Yeah, that's that's really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> you just answered my next question. I was going to say, how long do you spend on scripts? But you said you spend like sometimes a whole day, sometimes a whole week. So. Yeah. No, it really just depends on the topic of the video. Like mm -hmm. um, for my yeah. very first video on a uh, completely dedicated to, to cartoons. So, you know, not anime, just like Western cartoons. Right. That script took me a month and a half. Because I wanted to make oh, sure geez. that that was, yeah, I had to make sure that that was perfect. And the wildest thing is, is that uh, it, it was originally supposed to be about something else. Like, the topic was supposed mm -hmm. to be, uh, we need to fix adult cartoons. And I worked on that script for two weeks. Then I realized mm -hmm. that that script was trash. So I changed it to the new era of adult cartoons. And I worked on that for, uh, like, uh, three weeks or so, or a month and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and then I edited the video and now it's up and I'm like, finally! <laughs> <laughs> it, must feel, it must feel really good being able to like finally finish that project or whatever and just like <sighs> liberated from it. Yeah, there's like some ideas that I've scrapped mm -hmm. for, like a year or two ago that I've brought back and I was like, you know what? I think I'm finally in the right mind headset and stuff to, to finish this. Like I know what I want to say and then I'll jot down all my thoughts and then I'll make it uh, cohesive, and then boom, it's a video. <laughs> no lie, like literally stuff that I have from like two years ago, I ended up making into a video this year. Mm -hmm. Like I'm assuming the the cartoon video you were mentioning um, is that your like longest script or the longest time you've been you've worked on a script? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Oh dang! <laughs> yeah, with my other video essays, uh, it really just depends on how motivated I am. It could take a day, three days, a week, mm -hmm. or two weeks. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, for me, it takes, like, a couple months for, for just, like, a 15-minute a video. But... Oh, wow. I, I have a script I've been working on for, like, three years, and I keep forgetting <laughs> about it. And when I go to do it, I spend, like, weeks doing it. And so, Whoa. overall, I've spent, like, six months doing this. And I got a new laptop and lost all of it. Oh, so I, I i i read it all in like a month like i just sat and just typed it all out at some point in lockdown so I, I still haven't finished it but you know wow that's like that's amazing yeah that's like, like a couple <laughs> sentences per year <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if and when i actually make this video it'll be like a, uh, for me it'll be half an hour long because i talk really quickly yeah, I, I actually have that problem, too. I, I talk too fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sometimes I'll go back and re-record. Because uh, I was just like, Jesus Christ, you can't even make out what you're saying. <laughs> or sometimes I'll, uh, I'll catch myself while I'm recording. And I'm like, okay, let's do another take of this. But mm -hmm. slower. <laughs> <laughs> How many takes do you usually find yourself doing when making videos? Mm. So if I'm recording a voiceover, it, it, it honestly, it's very random. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I found out that my mic wasn't properly plugged in. So I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, God damn it. <laughs> but then it, it'll help because I'm already out of breath. So I'll want to talk slower. So <laughs> that kind of works out. Uh, and then there's the videos where I, I have my camera. So that's one. Those, it's. It, it kind of just depends on the topic, like mm -hmm. whether I'm discussing something or if I'm doing an unboxing video or maybe I'm doing a review. So it, it can be 
those videos do usually don't take that long, but they're like around 10 minutes, sometimes mm -hmm. 17. Yeah. Do you find yourself like um, being more critical of yourself when um, if you if like, for example, like if you're doing an unboxing or something, if you're more relaxed and you feel like uh, that you don't need to worry too much about making mistakes and any of that kind of stuff. But rather, but when you're making like, a, let's say, like a review or an analytical video of like the show or the concept within the show, you're more harsh on yourself and the stuff you make. Well, that's actually a really good question, and, and I have to agree with that for sure. Yeah, like unboxing videos, like I don't need to take notes or anything. Like I just mm -hmm. got some free shit. Like I'm, I'm gonna have a blast opening whatever. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> I got free stuff, and I'm gonna keep it. It's, it's gonna be great, especially mm -hmm. if it's like a snack box. And I'm like, wow, I got free snacks. This crap, I'm gonna <laughs> eat it all. <laughs> but but then with like stuff that I got a script for, or take notes for then, you know, that, that's going to take some time, and I want to make sure that that's going to be really good. Are you more harsh on yourself uh, with those kinds of videos? Uh, more for the video essays, for sure. Not really with, like, mm -hmm. the reviews where I just take, like, a simple note or two. Right. Uh, but, but the video essays, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to get a point across. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a simple discussion. Uh, I'm like, hey, here's where I stand. What say you? Uh, and I, I want to make sure I'm as clear as possible, make sure that no one's confused uh, as to what I'm saying. I don't want someone to come back and be all like, um, but, but this, or did, <laughs> I think you missed that. And it's just like, no, 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 no. I didn't miss anything. That's it. <laughs> Do, does anybody out of you, like outside of your online friends or persona, like know what you, what you do? For example, your family or friends or just overall social group? My my uh videos actually get shown at our family reunions oh god how's that <laughs> my, my nice. whole family's crazy for my content nice. and they don't mm -hmm. even watch anime they're just like so happy that i have like mm -hmm. all this attention <laughs> they're just like wow look at one of us <laughs> I, th I think that's probably the best reaction a family kids have yeah mm -hmm. honestly <laughs> oh man and uh yeah like because because youtube is just such a huge part of my life Mm -hmm. uh well really anime is such a huge part of my life and then youtube is just connected with that so mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you're gonna know this is gonna be one of the first things i say when i introduce myself <laughs> mm -hmm. have you ever had that that uh like somebody or a friend or something be critical of what you do like they judge you and they think it's dumb or something and that affect your friendship or anything like that uh youtube's never really affected uh friendships before mm -hmm. But back when I, I used to work at Starbucks for a year mm -hmm. and I had a, a lot, most of my coworkers watched anime, but one of them was like a hardcore, like elitist. So mm -hmm. he, he would judge my videos pretty <laughs> harshly. Yeah. <laughs> like, like when we, like when, I'll never forget when we first met, he, mm -hmm. he was just like, Hey, like what, what, what genres of anime do you like? And I'm like, Oh, just about all of them except for mech anime. And he's like, what's wrong with mech anime? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, oh, I don't know. I kind of just imagine like, like just toy robots going pew pew at each other. And he said, <laughs> you, and he said, you watch Attack on Titan. I'm like, yeah, of course I see Attack on Titan. He said, that's a mech. What? what? That, makes, that makes sense. <laughs> wait, oh my wait. god! It is. Wait, it is. It's a. It's a mech made of flesh. Exactly. He he explained to me that it's a flesh mech, which I, blew oh my, my mind. But I was also freaked out by how aggressive he was being. He's genius. Oh my god. I uh, yeah, I actually never thought about that. Like, I guess technically I it's. Uh, I guess technically it's a biological mech then, or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty as, interesting. As opposed to a psychological mech. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you used to work at Starbucks. So like, do people at Starbucks get other people's names wrong on purpose, or do they just mishear? Uh, mishear, for sure. Okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> My dad. <laughs> this, okay. this sounds very personal. Um, <laughs> so my dad once went in and said, "Our names were Billy and Muhammad." Neither of us is called Muhammad, and they thought I was Muhammad. <laughs> wow. I'm the whitest man alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, okay. you, as you're doing YouTube, like, um, I, I miss, you're, you seem to be very um, optimistic and positive about everything. So, do you ever feel a shame? Um, 
telling your friends or like or people you don't know like for example if you work somewhere else and um you you don't really want to let them know that you do youtube or specifically anime based youtube stuff do you ever feel like that shame or anything oh no no in fact like when i apply to jobs one mm -hmm. of the first things i tell them is by the way i'm a youtuber i do get sent off to conventions and stuff for like press th things and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i will need this this and this off and they're like okay cool do you think that gives you like a a job advantage or something yeah because they know that mm -hmm. i'm i'm out and about like they, they they know that i know what people like mm -hmm. and i know what people are interested in mm -hmm. Uh, at least nerd wise it really helped too when i worked over <laughs> at fye because mm -hmm. fye booths over at conventions too so when they found out that that i was applying for like a holiday job and stuff they're like oh my gosh no way that's so cool <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome what's yeah. what's fye uh it's uh for your entertainment they're they're a nerdy I knew uh, store I, I don't know what it is i just knew that's what it would be but, yeah yeah <laughs> okay that's cool so does you does doing YouTube like uh take a lot of your personal time like time that you would spend with your family or relaxation and if if so or if not like how do you how do you balance that out with like your own personal time? It used to actually like completely mm -hmm. take over my life back when I was first getting into anti tubing. Mm -hmm. Like I will never forget, I literally said no to hang out with a friend just so I can get an episode review out on time. Oh man, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. God, yeah, that was that was awful, absolutely awful. Uh, now, since I upload whenever the heck I want and mm -hmm. when I can, and I also take my time, especially on my um, video essays, uh, I just make my own schedule. Of course, there's some days where I'm just like, okay, I really do need to get this done because it's been weighing on my mind. I kind of want it off my laptop and onto the internet now. <laughs> right. Well, I, uh, yeah, so like mm -hmm. it, it's a lot better now. And sometimes my, my friends will also like come on in and help me out. You know, I'll collab with my other AnyTube friends or mm -hmm. like my regular friends outside. I'll be all like, hey, come join me for this unboxing video. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> that must help. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you um, do you do you, when you upload a video, is it like do you ever look at the analytics and stuff and it's not doing well and or after? posting something you say you take your time so i'm assuming uh, like the analytics doesn't bother you that as much as some other people would because i know sometimes if you don't post constantly um your analytics could look really bad and some people take that personally and they feel like they're not good enough or any of that kind of stuff D do you take like uh analytics personally uh it, it's on and off depending on mm -hmm. how long i worked on the video like for some videos I'm just all like, okay, you know, I, I, it took me two seconds to make this. It is what it is. But right. for others, um, like, I used to, it was weird. About a year ago, the algorithm just didn't want the slow and the female otaku videos to show up on anyone's feed. It's mm -hmm. been like that since last year in September. So I used to get, my typical views were between 2,000 and 15,000. Now my views are between... 300 and 1000 mm -hmm. it's dropped significantly the only things that get up to back where i used to have that many views would be my uh fake grand order streams mm -hmm. mm. does that ever feel yeah. discouraging oh yeah yeah totally especially if i worked so hard on a video mm -hmm. like uh man there was this one video essay that i worked on it was uh Call like the new age of, of, of shonen or something like that mm -hmm. and that was actually one of those videos where i had the idea for it two years ago and i brought it back and then so i was super happy i was like man i finally have like all my stuff down this this is this is what i want uh and i took forever to edit it but it, we got it done i even added a, a mini a bridge skit to it just because mm -hmm. and it, it did awful i don't even think it surpassed like 500 views oh dang Sad. yeah dang, that's yeah. really bad uh, Mm -hmm. so so like the, the video was the new age of shonen and mm -hmm. that makes me like think so you know like how there was the big three which i think was like naruto bleach in one piece or something right. like that yeah so there's a lot of like stuff i've seen on twitter where people saying the new big three personally i think that's crap mm -hmm. what do you think about it 
I feel like there's really no specific new big three because yeah. uh, mm-hmm. it's it's like constantly shifting, especially with all the anime that we get out. Mm-hmm. You know, what was the big three made sense because there wasn't as much anime airing at the time, and they were super long running anime. They were, I'm pretty sure, of their time, the best selling like Shonen Jump manga, which yeah. is why they were called the big three. Mm-hmm. Well, now there's so so much like it's so saturated, it's hard to say. Yeah, these three are the biggest at this one point in time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's going to constantly change. The only one that seems mm-hmm. to be remaining consistent would be uh, My Hero. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like My Hero and One Piece is probably one of the most consistent ones because I, I don't, for some mm-hmm. reason, One Piece is still huge in Japan for some reason uh-huh. and it's still going on. So it's like, that's kind of crazy. But the, mm-hmm. I don't know what, what, what the uh, third one would be, though. Closest thing I would say would be maybe JoJo's. Yeah, uh, I feel like that I would mean, be kind of niche. It's been going though. on for like yeah, it's, right. It's been going on for like thirty three years, and it's mm-hmm. monthly now. Like it used to be weekly. I'm pretty sure now it's monthly. Like like JoJo's is big, but I yeah. wouldn't say it's anywhere near as big as My Hero. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely not. I guess you can kind of like tell based on people cosplaying at cons because oh boy exactly. do i see so many dekus and todoroki todoroki's at cons oh my god it's it's yeah. like crazy especially when it's like sunday you know kids day like all the kids yeah. they're they're no longer dressing up as now dressing up as little dekus <laughs> <laughs> yeah no kidding um so speaking of cons like when you whenever you go to a con like uh, do you ever get noticed or outside of of the convention or not i guess it wouldn't be when you ever you go it's more like if you ever get out or if you ever get noticed outside of cons in general or if so how do you how do you deal with that yeah actually uh one time my friend and i we went over to my favorite crystal crystal shop over Mm -hmm. at this mall uh near my house and uh went to go uh look at look in the crystal shop and then uh the guy that was there he was like Oh my God, Sloan! I love your fake Grand Order streams. I was like, Oh my gosh, no way! You watch my content? He's like, Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, are you gonna be rolling for Ryko? <laughs> and he's like, I'm gonna try. And I'm like, Okay, look forward to my stream on Monday. I'm a roll. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, but then I also try not to uh, mm-hmm. go back to that shop as often because I don't want, like, of course he seemed chill, right? But right. You never, you never know. Obviously, you know, you don't you don't know who's going to follow you back. You don't know who's going to be looking at your your pattern, oh God, <laughs> you know, yeah. like your schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I just go sporadically now. And actually, I haven't seen him since. So I don't know, maybe if he stopped working there, or maybe I've just been mm-hmm. I don't know, lucky the past couple of so times. He but... got for being so nice to a customer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. But... Damn America, jeez. <laughs> Firing people for being nice. Oh my god. <laughs> what, what's next? You'll fire children for laughing. Jeez. Oh my god. So Evil country. What are your what are your thoughts on like the anime community in general or how it is right now compared to how it was? Like how it was when? Like back like I guess back when you kind of first started getting to anime a lot if you compare it to today because i know uh if you compare it to today I'll, there's a lot of cancel culture and like toxicity oh, sure. and that more than than it used to be because back then like around 2013 or so it, like mm-hmm. you didn't really see a lot of that but i guess one could say that it's because of social media and twitter and stuff but i don't know mm-hmm. what do you think what are your thoughts on that yeah, you know, I guess the the toxicity has kind of transitioned because I feel like back when I first started out, because when mm-hmm. I first became an anime fan, uh, it was when Attack on Titan was was booming, so there were a mm-hmm. lot of new people coming in, right? Um, and uh, really, the there were arguments, of course, but the arguments back then were the sub versus dub argument, and uh, if you only watch shonen anime, then you're a shonen tard uh, and have no taste, and um. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the other thing? There was like, one, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wife who sucks, you know, like oh, yeah. <laughs> those. Those were the main ones. Mm-hmm. But now today, uh, it actually has to relate to the video that I uploaded earlier today, mm-hmm. um, which is like stuff on. Um, oh, if you find this like anime character that's confirmed fifteen, then that means you're a pedo in real life. 
And I'm mm-hmm. just like, no, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't mean that because the actual 15 year old car- uh, people do not look like the cast of my hero. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're not. They're yeah. not born with that colored hair. They're. They don't have superpowers. Yeah. They're not voiced by <laughs> grown adults. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, I find it crazy that that I don't know if you've heard, but I believe the UN w- was trying to like ban anime i believe oh what or something i didn't know that they they, they were trying to crack down on like um explicit children let's say that and so they so they wanted to get rid of like lollies and stuff okay so they considered banning they they thought like it's really it's hard to get rid of one specific part of a thing it's Mm -hmm. like let's ban shooting games oh every game can have shooting in it secretly so let's ban all video games so they would just have to ban all anime to crack down on it. Isn't isn't Trump's son a weeaboo? I don't I don't think sure like, I'm, 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 sure, I'm pretty sure Baron Trump put a thing on Twitter like, hey, can someone recommend me some anime? No, I don't think so. I think I'm that was just like up. somebody I'm look this up now. I think I'm that's just someone memeing or something. There's no way. That'd be kind of Is weird. This your way I, of I saying that you did it. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I hacked into the uh, to his Twitter account, and did all that. No, I didn't. Please Baron don't Trump, don't come after me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Baron Trump. Um, actually, I don't think that's his real Twitter. Mm. Oh, BTB post. Oh, so, I don't know. I can't read that. It's too blurry. It's kind of weird because a lot of celebrities now are more accepting of like anime and stuff, and they're announcing. Because I think it was like, uh, who was it? I don't know. Do you do you ever what do you what are your thoughts on that, Salone? Like about celebrities coming out saying, Oh, I love anime or like Elon Musk, for example, he said he claims to be like a weeb or something, but I don't know. Uh, I'm honest, I, I, I don't care. It. You don't uh, I don't care. <laughs> the only one that I think is kinda cool about it is uh mm-hmm. Megan the Stallion. Because uh, she's super out in the open about it. Uh, she'll even wear like weeb merch to, to award mm-hmm. shows, so I think that's the coolest. Um, right. but other than her, I, I, I really don't care. They're just another person that likes anime. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of crazy though, that, you know, more people are more accepting, which is a good thing. Cause that just means that, you know, people who make content online that has to do with anime can introduce them mm-hmm. to like shows and stuff like how you can introduce them to like, you know, the anime romances and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you have like a broader audience now than it used to be back in 2013. Yeah, sure, yeah. I feel like there used to be some sort of, like, stigma around it where people, like, would say they like anime and they'd get sort of looked down upon. And I feel like that's sort of going away now because it's more on American television. It's not on over here. Yeah, that's right. I never really got that. And, like, celebrities are saying they like it, so people are starting to realize, hey, it's okay. It's not all weird technical stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you ever get that, like, when you were getting into anime that, or you were kind of, like, hesitant of getting into anime because of that stigma or anything like that? No, because a lot of my friends, uh, I went to a pretty artsy high school, so most Mm -hmm. of us were nerds anyway. So Mm -hmm. it was already pretty well accepted. Like, even the people who who played football and stuff, they they were out in the open about watching anime. It was never a secret for anyone. Mm -hmm. Especially since Attack on Titan was going on at the time, so everyone else was also, like, hopping in on anime so i never really got made fun of that fun for that sort of thing the only thing i ever got made fun of for was uh back in 2011 uh Mm -hmm. i was the only k-pop fan i knew so (laughs) oh wow (laughs) it was was k-pop that i would uh get poked fun out of uh for and it was really by my family and i'd be Mm -hmm. all like you guys listen to spanish music what's wrong with listening to korean music and then k-pop took off in like 2016 so i'm like you guys don't know anything about the stuff that i that i listen to do you guys even know who big bang and girls generation are (laughs) do you (laughs) wasn't that around the time like i think gundam style came out or became a big thing on youtube yeah, actually, Gangnam Style yeah. came out in 2012. I got into what? K-pop a whole year before Gangnam Style came out. So oh, I'm, I'm still very proud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dang, I really found this niche little genre back in the day when no one knew what it was. <laughs> nice. You found a genre, and then the genre got smacked by a meme. Well yes. done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So since you're a part of the anime community, do you ever get like drama or people trying to drag you into drama between you and somebody else? So this is gonna be funny. Um, <laughs> there was this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what was this guy's problem, but ever since I first started YouTube, Every single year, he would make a yearly, like, I hate Sloan video. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Oh, man. I don't know what he's this. doing now. I don't even mm -hmm. know if he's on YouTube right now. Um, I haven't checked out his stuff since, like, I think 2017, 2016. But mm -hmm. it was, I, I no lie, like, every year, he'd just make a video on something that I did. And he just shit on it for, like, 15 minutes. Is it your and no no one would comment on the video, no one mm -hmm. would watch it. Uh but uh him he uh he had seven thousand followers, so uh, I'm not saying that they were bought, but mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> with no likes or comments. <laughs> <laughs> Did, so wh what exactly was he shitting you on? Like was it your analytical videos? <laughs> is it because you were talking about a specific something, or is it just you in general? It'd be something that, like I say in passing, like, I remember the mm -hmm. first, one of the first hate videos he made on me was, uh, I was reacting to Kiss X Sis for, uh, like, subscriber special, mm -hmm. and I was saying how gross it was, so he made a whole video saying how I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so he has a grudge on you because of Kiss X Sis, oh my god, yeah, dude. Yeah, it, it just took <laughs> off from there, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even discover him on my own. Like one of my mm -hmm. friends was just like, "Yo, Sloan, like someone's just like shitting on you," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and then I will find out that he's been doing this for like the past three years, and I'm like, "What? What, what is this?" <laughs> <laughs> and the last, the last time I, I saw one of his videos for his yearly shit on Sloan video mm -hmm. was uh, he was there was this anime that aired in I, I don't remember if it was 2018 or 2017. But it was called Happy Sugar Life. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I made, yeah, yeah. 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 I made tweets about it saying mm -hmm. how bad it was. Mm -hmm. So he made a whole video dedicated to my, my tweets about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he wow. ended the video. I, I kid you not. He ended the video by saying, also, I don't think she's pretty. Wow. <laughs> I'm just like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> that was he so sounds, funny. He sounds like my younger self. Oh, my God. <laughs> I promise it's not me. Okay, I know I'll... it's not you. He's not British. <laughs> okay, good. He's not cool. <laughs> Is he like the only hater that's ever done that, or do you get more of those? Yeah, no, he's he's really the the only hater that I've like really the... had. Mm -hmm. Like that? No, that's gonna make you sound like rude, but like mm -hmm. I just get like rude comments. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know everyone does. Yeah, but yeah this guy was was something else. I mean, like a yearly hate video. Like, Mm -hmm. What? I think he, he probably he has, has it. like it in his. He has it like in his calendar on his. Phone. Yeah, I was gonna say like, <laughs> that time every year it just comes up like I hate Sloan on this day. He just looks at squint. He squints at his calendar. It's like it's that time of the year again. All right, <laughs> and he just gets ready for his um rant about you. <laughs> oh my god! He, he just looks through all that I've done within the past year and just kind of like he watches all of your video and then. <laughs> Just sort of takes the worst clip from every single video, puts it together, and then dubs over it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That is wild. <laughs> There's just so so many weird people. I admire on the other guy. I admire I admire the guy. He 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 tries. I I oh, guess. Boy. I mean he, he puts effort into hating you at least. He, at least he's not just like putting something on Twitter saying, Oh, I don't like her. Like, at least he's trying. I guess. I don't know. It's a whole unedited video of him just. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Me. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that kind of stuff, like, do you ever get like uh, weird DMs or creepy DMs or anything, or do you even look at your DMs or anything? Like, what or what's the uh, weirdest thing that you ever gotten? So with my DMs, mm -hmm. ever since I created my accounts. I, I made it so that the only people who can DM me is just my friends. Mm -hmm. So on Twitter, I don't get that sort of thing because it's only just my mutuals. As mm -hmm. for Instagram, people can still request to mm -hmm. chat with me, but mm -hmm. I usually just decline. Unless, like, if it's, especially if it's just, like, a picture. Like, the picture will be blurred. Uh, so mm -hmm. I don't see it unless I accept it. So I'm just like, nope. So I just uh, automatically <laughs> yeah. delete it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good because you never know what that, what that might yeah. be. But, you know. Exactly. Um, a really and... bad meme. 
um, <laughs> and and That's sometimes so sometimes the if they request to DM me, it'll there'll be a message first. So I'll read mm-hmm. the message to see if they're like being weird or not. But if it's like something simple, like "Hey, uh, I'm gonna delete it." Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's an offer at a sponsorship, I'll check it out, but I will refer them to my email. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're just asking me a question, like, "Hey, Sloan, like, where where do you watch your anime or this and that?" Or, "Hey, where'd you buy that thing? Like, where'd you buy that wig?" And then then I'll accept it. Be like, "Oh, I bought it over here." Mm-hmm. Um, but really, it's just uh, my friends that I that I DM. That that's just how I keep mm. it. Okay, that's that's pretty good because you know you never mm-hmm. know what what kind of stuff you or stuff that people might send you. But oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, so you you haven't really had like any strange uh, stuff or encounters with with people at all. Then from the sounds of it, uh, not not really. Mm-hmm. No, because because all that stuff is like filtered, you know. Like I, right. I I don't accept it in the first place. <laughs> what about like I just stop it right at the start? What if you're like at a con or anything? Do you ever get stuff like that? Like not not DMs or anything, but like if somebody just comes up to you and just like I don't know tries to hug you without your consent or like I don't know some weird stuff. Because I know there's a lot of weird people out there, so I don't know. Yeah, but. I don't think they were trying to hurt my feelings or anything. Like they're mm-hmm. usually just like very nervous. Like I had this one guy. I was a, uh, I was modeling for the, I think it was the Aki Bento booth mm-hmm. over at Otakon last year, uh, and so this guy goes up to me and he says, "Hey, are you Sloan the female Taku?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and he he stares at me and says, "Okay," and then turns around. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, he he was nervous as shit." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he didn't come back, so I was just like, "Damn, mm-hmm. oh, the poor lad." Um, so I, I will get that. Mm-hmm. Um, best instance, though, uh, this isn't a creepy one, but th- th- this is just this is just funny. Mm-hmm. Like this guy, like this happened twice during Otakon as well last year. I was walking, and this group of people. This is gonna be like five or six of them just come up to me. They're like, "Oh, slow, so slow," and I'm like, "Hi!" <laughs> and they have like their their nervous friend like behind them, and then they're like, "He's a big fan," and I'm like, "Oh, sick!" And they're like, "Can we get a picture with you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you can." So I was like, "That's really mm-hmm. cool." They they like did that for like his their buddy. Oh, uh, that's sweet. Yeah, and then like uh, on the last day of the con, they they saw me again. Only this time uh, it was when I was a uh, boothing. So they went up to me and they're like, "Oh my gosh, slow night!" And I was like, "Hey, they can we get another picture?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was fun well, um, oh i love that <laughs> what's your favorite con you've been to because i've never been and i almost went to asin this year oh wow i've never been to asin i've never been to any cons in the midwest i, I, um, I had my plane tickets bought i had the con tickets bought and, <laughs> and then, then COVID the, came the big old virus came in and just like ah, nope it's, it's, <laughs> it's okay <laughs> They they pushed my registration back so I can go next year, and then I've got oh. a voucher for the plane ticket, so oh. I'm gonna try to go next year. Okay. So, but um, yeah, what's your favorite con you've been to? So, like my top, um, I adore Anime Boston. Mm-hmm. I uh, Anime NYC is also fantastic. Mm-hmm. And uh, next one, like I, I, it's this local con. Uh, it's called a Castle Point Anime Convention, and it was like the first anime convention I ever been to. And I go there mm-hmm. every year. And like this year, I was supposed to guest, but of course, the Rona. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but I did guest last year too, which was great. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I love my local con. <laughs> does Does a lot of people in your local con like know you? And oh yeah, compared to the other cons. Uh, honestly, so I'm known as that girl mm-hmm. who goes to all the 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 northern east coast cons Mm -hmm. because i literally go to all the northern east coast cons (laughs) (laughs) so they they either know me from youtube Mm -hmm. uh they know me because i I guested that at that con before or i've come up to them like with my camera being like hey can i film you for my cosplay music video like that's happened a lot and that's how i made a a good portion of my friends Mm -hmm. is because i asked Mm -hmm. to film their cosplay for my music video and then we became friends afterwards do you so you you hang out like when you're doing that kind of stuff, do you do you ever get? Are you the one asking them, or I can't even talk right now? But are you the one asking them to hang out, or do they ask you to hang out, or like, or do you ever like hang out with your fans or anything like, um, just to walk around or and that kind of stuff? Uh, I have hung out with fans before. It just depends mm-hmm. how how well I've already 
like I, I had to have spoken to the fan before on like social media. Mm-hmm. Like there's this one uh, girl I'm friends with. Uh, she goes by Chibi Tifa mm-hmm. and she's a cosplayer and she was a fan of my uh, fake Grand Order streams. And the first year I went to Otakon, she was she was just like, oh, gee, I hope to meet you, you know, wherever I like the fate meetup and stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I recognized her from her profile pic uh, when I saw her over at Otakon. Uh, like she she saw me walking and then I saw her and I'm like, oh, God, you're, you're Chibi Tifa, aren't you? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <That's> uh, <awesome. laughs> so so we, we were actually lost trying to find the fate meetup because it relocated mm-hmm. because there was like too many people that showed up. Mm-hmm. So uh, I walked with her and her friends and then we all found the, the meetup and then we just continued the chat. And she was all like, hey, uh, hoping maybe you could follow me back on Twitter. And I'm like, yeah, no, you're cool. Yeah, I'll follow you back. So, so we're still friends and we uh we, we've done other cosplay groups together so it, it really just depends on how chill the fan has been with me beforehand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that's interesting mm-hmm. so you said you cosplay so when when did you just when did you decided to start cosplaying then that's always a funny question because <laughs> so uh at my first anime convention which was mm-hmm. in 2015 I thought it was a rule that you have to cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I uh, cosplayed Mikasa from Attack on Titan, mm-hmm. and I uh, <laughs> it, it was cute. Like I borrowed my mom's red scarf. I didn't use a wig because Mikasa and I had the same hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, at least, I, I don't have that hair anymore. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I ordered the, the jacket from Amazon. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I ordered it from eBay, and I got I had a, like a a plain white T shirt, and then I got the, I didn't get the exact Attack on Titan pants. I got these printed on leggings from Hot Topic, mm-hmm. and then I borrowed my mom's boots, and that was it. I was ready to go slay some Titans at the con. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Were there any Titans to slay? No, but uh, a lot more. Uh, you know. People dressing up as Attack on Titan in 2015. It was oh, still yeah. going. Oh God! Strong. Yeah, no kidding. Like you would see Attack on Titan cosplays like all over the place. Mm-hmm. Which is I crazy. Think that's sort of gonna when the last season comes out. I think that's gonna sort of mm-hmm. like come back for a bit. See, I want to say that, but it didn't happen with season two, and it didn't happen with season three. So I don't. I don't think yeah. it's gonna happen with the final season. Yeah, I feel like only the um like dedicated fans would just watch it. But I don't think like the community would ride on that hype train and start cosplaying you know like it used to be yeah like i sold my mikasa cosplay i knew i was Mm -hmm. done (laughs) i've had one of the jackets sitting in my wardrobe for like six years so wow i've worn it once whoa stuff goes in there it never comes out so (laughs) (laughs) so so when you went to this to your first con um and you thought that you had a cosplay like did, did you just like basically wear the same cosplay for all three days or or did you like change it up or anything like that? Or did you realize, uh, like after the first day or second day, that oh, I don't need a cosplay; I could just wear my normal outfit. So the the first convention I went to is a Castle Point Anime Convention, mm-hmm. and at the time, uh, Castle Point Anime Convention is run by uh, an anime club over at a university, mm-hmm. and that that convention just blew up. But at the time, it was only a one day con, and it was only oh, on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, Uh, but then like two, three years later, they expanded to two days Mm -hmm. and then they switched locations because they they, they really blew up. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, they know me, though. The staff knows me. I'm friends with them and stuff. Mm -hmm. They they have me as like a guest and stuff. So it's it's, it's good. (laughs) (laughs) Have have you ever like traveled to another country for a con? I was going to last year, actually. Um, But what was it? I because I have my 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 main crew of anti-tube friends Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. one of our friends is canadian and he just cannot afford to come to america so we're like okay fine we're gonna come to you Mm -hmm. so we bought tickets to anime north we got the hotel ready and everything we were all set and ready to go uh but then something happened to each of us uh one of my friends he ended up like freaking totaling his back could not walk for months yeah uh and then for me my mom, she was graduating from college and mm-hmm. her college is all the way in California. And it was during that same weekend when Anime North was going to happen. So I was like, ah, man, I, I can't go. You know, I got to go see my mom graduate. Uh, I, I ended up going over to Fanime. So that was my first uh, California mm-hmm. <laughs> anime convention, my first West Coast anime convention. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up not going to Anime North, and uh, we just canceled the whole thing. So then we're gonna do it again this year. Mm-hmm. Then the Rona. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. C- congratulations to your mom. Oh, thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, she's she's doing great. Yeah. That's good. Like so, um, okay. I guess I guess this could be a question that probably a lot of people have asked you, but I'm kind of curious. Like, what kind of anime do you usually watch? Like, it could be like genre. I don't know. Like specific shows. You know, it used to be genre specific, mm-hmm. but now it's just whatever I'm in the mood for. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't know what it is. Every year, I like every New Year. So that January mm-hmm. February period. I just, I'm only in the mood for slice of life anime. All right. I just want to mm-hmm. chill into the new year. And then February comes around and I'm like, okay, I want a slice of life romance. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the rest of the year, it's just whatever I'm feeling. But like back in the day before, I was just craving psychological thrillers. Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah. I, I wanted the edge. Uh, so <laughs> 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 I, right. I, I, just found, I just found it fascinating though, because mm-hmm. we don't get psychological thrillers uh in america that much it's Mm -hmm. just either horror you know right right, right. that's about Uh, it or uh, suspense uh not really psychological that much Mm -hmm. i think a lot of like western psychological horrors go too far in the horror and not enough on psychological agreed they will they'll put emphasis on horror like Mm -hmm. say you've got a movie where there's a character who has mental issues for example or a good example, the only example I have from experience is the TV show Legion, which is like an X-Men show about a guy who has really strong like mental powers. Mm-hmm. And they made it really creepy. Oh. Instead of being about, hey, this is how he's struggling with his mental issues. They were like, this is how he's struggling with his mental issues, but it'll make you unable to sleep at night. Yeah. So I, f- I feel like it's a lot easier to sort of... The, J- the Japanese are better at that than Americans. Mm-hmm. 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 Like out of all the you psychological, uh, out of all the psychological shows, which one's like your favorite that you've seen so far? Psychological anime. I love Parasite to bits. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's a great one. I wish I'd finished uh, it. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Is there any shows that makes you want like, oh yeah, I, I kind of want to watch that again, like for the fourth or fifth time or something like that? Uh, I did that a lot earlier this year. I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm a I'm a rewatch anime that I used to watch tens of thousands of times. So I rewatched High School of the Dead and I rewatched Black Lagoon. Mm-hmm. It's that, been a while since I, I last know. rewatched them. Yeah, that's pretty High interesting. School of the Dead is great. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, I don't know because like, it's it's a you know it's very fan servicey and it's interesting like. It, are you why why do you watch that show is it because of the i don't know if you're into that kind of fan service or just the concept <laughs> of the um of the whole setting you're handling so awkwardly oh my god <laughs> uh so i guess what was it i got into anime through the ecchi genre actually oh so, really yeah <laughs> freaking little sloan didn't know what the hell was going on mm-hmm. but I first discovered anime back in 2008. Mm-hmm. I didn't start really getting into anime until 2013, but I discovered it in 2008. I was in fifth grade and I was Googling something, can't remember what, and mm-hmm. one of the results was an anime video and I was so mad. I was like, what does this have to do with my search? <laughs> <laughs> so I clicked on it and it was this underrated etchy harem anime called mm-hmm. uh, and it was like part two of an episode you know like one of those uh, things yeah. back, back <laughs> yeah. in the day when they was like in yeah. parts and stuff yeah yeah and still a thing, old, you know? <laughs> i don't know but yeah uh it, it was it's so it's this underrated um ecchi harem anime called uh Ayuriyashi. so i watched that mm-hmm. and i was like Dude, yo this is kind of interesting like like i of course i was in the middle of of an episode uh, mm-hmm. of, of like that season and i didn't know what was going on but i was like wait this is it's kind of interesting. What? So then mm-hmm. I go and click on the next episode, and it's not the next episode. Instead, it's a random part from Rosario Vampire, and, I, <laughs> and, and Rosario Vampire, like that one's dumb enough for a kid to understand because it's just monster of the week. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, I got into it very fast, 
And then oddly enough, that same weekend, my friend just so also to happen to discover Rosario Vampire. So we were just talking mm-hmm. about it. You're like, wow, what a coincidence that we both discovered <laughs> Rosario Vampire that weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, then in 2013, I was like, hey, remember that one anime you watched when you were a kid? What was it called? Oh yeah, Rosario Vampire. <laughs> and it was on Netflix. So mm-hmm. then that's how I continued on. I just watched like the whole anime collection from Netflix and just moved on from there. Mm-hmm. Do you think Netflix is good for the anime community or do you think it's like bad or do you think it's just sort of there? Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's good. Definitely good. Like the fact that what really blows my mind is that the latest season of Seven Deadly Sins, like everyone else like hated it when it was airing. But once it got on Netflix, it ended up in the top 10 for weeks. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. D- didn't it get like a lot of bad like publicity because it had bad animation? Yeah, but also during that part anyway, uh, in the manga, it was already going downhill. So, like, yeah. we all knew that content wasn't going to be good anyway. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, like, the casual anime watchers, man, like, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and there's a lot of anime that they love more. It's like Kakegururi, too. Like, a lot of casual anime mm-hmm. watchers love Kakegururi. Yeah, it's really good. Like, mm-hmm. There are so many shows I haven't finished. Like, no worries. I-, I start them and mean to finish them and just don't. <laughs> Do you ever, like, introduce um, um, somebody else into anime or try to get them into anime? Or do you just, like, don't even bother with that kind of stuff? Huh. Try to get someone into... I mean, I'll recommend them shows. Mm-hmm. But I've never... Oh, you know what? I did actually once. And uh, it was when my uh, baby cousin was sleeping over during Christmas last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just still like, because I, I haven't hung out with her the entire time, and I'm just like, okay, maybe I can get her into an anime so we have something to talk about. Right. <laughs> so I showed her Oran High School Host Club, and she fell in love with it, and she still posts about it on her little Instagram, and she's like 11 years old, so it's it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good show to get into, like if you're starting uh-huh. out. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice pick. <laughs> yeah. It never told to me. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, no, I, I was trying to think of something that she that that, that she would like. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not like uh, Sailor got... Moon or anything. Uh, I never watched Sailor Moon, so I don't. Yes, really someone anything. else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it? Oh, I got my moment at JoJo. So <gasps> Whoa! That, that's my big accomplishment. That's amazing. <laughs> Something really weird though is that I found that a lot of women, like elder, not elderly, but like not young, not my own age, um, like Jotaro, and that's really weird because he's seventeen. Yep. <laughs> I, I mean, he's pretty cool, dude. So I mean, you know, it's Jojo. It doesn't too. excuse him from being a minor. I yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um. <laughs> yeah. But then again, that carries into Sloane's recent video, which is yep. about just as a because a character is meant to be it is underage doesn't mean it's weird to like them, because once again, it's a cartoon. Uh huh. <laughs> Are you like very passionate about that that subject? It's just been bothering me for the mm-hmm. past week. Like my friends and I have even like debated about this. Like we're both on the mm-hmm. same side. Uh, but we're just all like, ah, I just don't understand. And they're like, yeah, I just don't understand why everyone's so bad. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, we get like literally in whole tangents about this. So I'm just like, you know what? The world needs to know. That's it. <laughs> it's been like a very hot topic lately because mm-hmm. you've been seeing a lot of stuff like that in the news and stuff. When you watch anime, what do you, what do you think makes a, an anime better than average? For example, like Demon Slayer. At the end of a year, usually, mm-hmm. a show blows up. A show blows up. Mm-hmm. So, like, Demon Slayer at the end of last year blew up, but now it's, like, average. And people mention Demon Slayer, and they're like, oh, it was big, but now it's average. So, like, why do you think that happened? Uh, are you... Uh, I'm a little confused. You, you you want to know how an anime blows up in the first place, or when an anime so, like, falls? An, an anime gets big. Yeah. And it... And then it sort of goes back to being like average and then people realize like all along it 
was average. Like, Attack on Titan is another example. It was big, but it's never going to be as big as it was. Mm -hmm. So why do you think things get so big in the first place? Uh, Honestly, it was weird with Demon Slayer because for most of its run, people weren't talking about it until episode 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. and that's when everyone started talking about it and then you had like famous twitch streamers talking about it too saying like yo this is like one of the greatest anime of all time and it was trending worldwide it was wild mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then it just like stuck with everyone for a really really long long time uh like even in the beginning of this year people were still like super hype about it yeah oh yeah especially um, with the movie around the corner yeah exactly uh so i think a lot of it just has to do with time mm -hmm. like the same thing happened with one punch man one punch man blew up but season two, yeah. and then season two was announced shortly after, but mm -hmm. it didn't air until last year. Yeah. That also happened with Attack on Titan. Like, we had to wait for season two for a solid, like, three years or something. Maybe four years, was it? I don't remember. Yeah, it was like, it was, yeah, pretty sure it was, it was like three. three yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And was, now the yeah. movie, you know, is delayed, and it's, it's a movie, too. You know, it's not like a full season two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the movie's not going to get as much views as the series did. Because, you know, anime films don't have... They never really get that wide release. It's always in, like, yeah. limited theaters. Yeah. Uh, I think anime... I, mm -hmm. I think movies based on, like, series are weird. Like, Dragon Ball's an example. Where mm -hmm. the movies, like... Even though they can be as good, they're not as sort of fulfilling as a series. Whereas if it's a standalone movie, like Your Name, for example. It's mm -hmm. great because it's one story it doesn't you don't have any outside factors coming into it and it has so sort of its own universe yeah that's true also when the film is like on uh netflix like a silent yeah. voice like mm -hmm. people know about a silent voice um like because of netflix i've noticed mm -hmm. i watched it before it got on netflix uh like right. i watched it when I it got fan sub the whole whole but uh <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, then it was in theaters, but it was in such limited theaters. Uh, it, it, I swear, it barely had any screenings at all. And then it got on Netflix, and now more people know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tried finding it before it was on Netflix, but I couldn't. But mm. yeah, the United Kingdom, man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of restrictions there. Like, I, I heard that Funimation, like, took forever just to get there, or be for you guys to be even able to, like, stream. Yeah. There, there, it's like Netflix, where there are some, except on Netflix, there are things that the UK has that America doesn't, and mm. the same America has some things the UK doesn't. While on Funimation, there's a lot that America has and we don't, but there's nothing that we have that you don't, so it's... Mm. Um, I think it makes sense, but it annoys me, because I need to change my VPN to America if I ever want to watch it. Ah. But, like, I... I, I I'm fine with what there is legally. Like, Hunter Hunt is on there now, and I've been watching that, so... That's great. Like, what's your preferred is, yeah. platform to watch anime on? Oh, I love Verve. Verve, yeah. Verve is the best. Probably the best deal out of all the platforms, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I used to just use Crunchyroll, but then Verve mm -hmm. came out, and I was like, nah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm kind of sad that Funimation, like, kind of, like, stepped away from Verve. Because, like, I, if only Funimation, Crunchyroll, and High Dive, like, was on Verve, then, you know, that would probably make everything way more better. But Ah, uh, no, for real. That is so true. But, like, at the same time, it's that Monopoly thing. Kind of, like, you don't want that Monopoly because then they could just easily increase the price to 20 bucks per month or something. And it might as well that's be true. cable TV or something at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Do you find yourself like watching um, dubs or subs? Like, <laughs> this is probably the most <laughs> controversial question, but you know, I guess it's honestly, your I, I I I switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't really mm -hmm. stand one thing. Mm -hmm. Just whatever I'm in the mood for. Like sometimes when I start a new anime, it depends on what I'm doing at the time. Like if I'm doing my la la my laundry at the time, dub. But if mm -hmm. I just want to sit down and relax, then I'll play the sub. But what if I have a headache? Okay, I'll play the dub. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, it, it really just depends on, on how I feel. Like I remember when Cells at Work first came out, mm -hmm. uh, I was just watching the sub 
And then I uh, stopped watching it after like episode six or something and forgot about it. Mm -hmm. I was sick earlier this year. So I was like, hey, it'd be cute if I watched uh, if I finished cells at work and it was on Netflix, too. So I was like, great. So I started it and I was like, let me watch the dub. And so mm -hmm. I watched the rest of it in dub. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I don't really stand one thing over the other. Just well, however I feel. Do you ever mm -hmm. is it ever hard? Like, I know sometimes like people are like. They, they watch the dub and they, they're kind of impatient, so they watch the sub. Are you, like, picky? Like, oh, if I'm going to watch a dub, I'm just going to watch the dub throughout the whole show until it finishes? Or are you like, okay, I'm not going to wait for the dub to come out. I'm just going to directly go to sub and vice versa. Yeah, that's actually what I did earlier this year with an anime mm -hmm. called Smile Down the Runway. Mm -hmm. I started out watching the dub, and uh, then I ran out of dub episodes, but I was like, ah, oh, no, but the the episode was so good. I guess I switched <laughs> to sub, and that's mm -hmm. what I did. So mm -hmm. I, I just watched the the sub for the the rest of the time it was airing. What's in your opinion? What's like the the best dub you've ever heard or ever watched? I guess. Uh, I feel like it's hard to say what the best dub is. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I out guess of all my the personal shows, favorite. Yeah. I I love Black Lagoon's dub so much. Mm -hmm. That one's great. Ah. Uh, there, there's also Penny and Stocking. Oh yeah, that that's, a, that's yeah. a masterpiece. Oh my god, I mm -hmm. love that show. Oh freaking, I, I'm stupid. Ghost Stories is the best. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Ghost Stories is the best. Oh clearly. Yeah, yeah, no, Ghost Stories is the best. <laughs> yeah, the, the high quality improv from the voice actors is great. <laughs> no, because you're a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're black. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's great. That that like that like aged very well like w like old wine like oh my god I swear oh my god no it was so funny my friends and I last playing a JoJo's drinking game and mm -hmm. then we were like hey let's start watching ghost stories and so we just continued to watch ghost stories while we were totally crunk and it was great how do you play a JoJo's drinking game I want I want to take note of this oh boy I can copy and paste you the notes because it's uh. Please. I'll I'll read some of them because like we we found the the drinking game rules and there was a lot so we were like okay we have to half this this is too much we'll all die so uh, we halved it and this is what we came up with so let me read some of them uh, every time a stand or power is explained when the <laughs> color scheme completely t changes when a stand cry is yelled out. Every time a villain and or their stand says that they can't be beaten. Um, every time something cute or wholesome happens. Every time someone is an absolute idiot. And mind you, <laughs> we're watching part four. So this is Okoyasu oh oh Central. Oh <laughs> there's more, but like, Jesus Christ, there's, there's a lot. And then we, we added two more. We were like, drink every time Tomoko comes on screen. And drink during the opening and ending theme. So like, oh uh, boy. We were drinking soju too, which is a uh, twelve percent alcohol. So oh, it was a geez. whole thing. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> well, you know what was a fun evening anyway. <laughs> it, Dang, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. that sounds okay, really cool. fun. Mm -hmm. You've given me an idea. One of my friends is going away in a couple of weeks, so I'm having a party to celebrate. So I'm going to do that. <gasps> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a big manga person? I'm assuming since you're you have a a podcast about manga, mm -hmm. like do you prefer do you find yourself preferring anime over manga, or do you, are you more of a manga person than an anime person? Uh, I used to just read manga casually, mm -hmm. uh, but last year I just read so much more manga than I, and now I have like a nice balance between the two. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice. Sometimes I just want a a, a good read. I want a good binge read rather than a binge watch. Mm -hmm. um or sometimes i saw an anime and i'm like "Ooh, i need more and then i'll read the manga and, nice. and catch up to it and then feel sad that i caught up uh, so <laughs> <laughs> which anime was that demon slayer demon slayer yeah nice. like, I, I had to i had to catch up on demon slayer though otherwise mm -hmm. i would have gotten spoiled ah uh, okay mm -hmm. that's true because you know there's people like that on online i guess yeah so, out of all the manga you've read so far, like, what's your personally your favorite? Uh, definitely a silent voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, read the whole thing before the movie came out, oh, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah the 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 movie the movie's great. 
It didn't mm-hmm. adapt everything, which I knew it wouldn't since it's just a movie and not a series. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it, it, it did good with what it had. And But I, I, I do adore the manga immensely. Mm-hmm. Like... I don't know. Like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of upset that they didn't inv- like include the, um, I don't know the the part where, th- or did they? I, I, it's been a while, but there was a part mm-hmm. where he was trying to become like a filmmaker or something. Yeah, or- that's like the central plot. That's what brings yeah. them all together in the first. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, where's that? I was, I was kind of expecting yeah. that, but then I was yeah. like, yeah, it's a movie. So I'm, I'm kind of upset too that they didn't make it into like a show or anime series instead, like a 25 yeah. episode at least, because that would have been mm-hmm. like you know, better. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Like it still got the emotions okay. across, but there were like some characters where you're just all like, "Why are they even here?" And I'm just here thinking to myself, <laughs> "There's a reason. It's literally the central plot of the yeah. manga. Why they're all there? <laughs> it carries on for volumes." <laughs> do you are you do you ever find yourself buying manga like a lot, or do you try to not try to keep it all digital because of space or, or anything like that? Uh, I usually just. Does this make sense? Stream my manga because I because it has it's on Viz and you don't have to like mm-hmm. download mm-hmm. it. You just kind of just read it yeah. straight up online. Right. Um, yeah. But I do have quite a few physical copies. I do want to expand my collection for sure. But you know, there's only so much when you're also an avid uh, Nendo and scale figure collector. Oh so. god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, like, um, oh, go ahead, Ducky. I have like a few. I, well, no, I have a lot of manga, but there's like a few series mm-hmm. I want to collect all of, like Naruto, My Hero, and oh. Pokemon Adventures. Mm-hmm. I want to collect like all of those, and then just see whatever else there is. But mm-hmm. I have a bookshelf I've been meaning to put up for like two years. It has just not happened. I'm a lazy person. <laughs> have but you ever? I'm not good with the. I'm I'm not good with the drill. Don't make me do this. Damn. <laughs> have you ever debated about like? selling your stuff like manga merch or whatever because you're like well i can just read this online so i don't really need this anymore because it's just collecting dust at that point uh i did a few years back mm-hmm. i uh i did sell some manga and stuff because i just wasn't that into that series anymore like ajin uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I used to have the ajin manga but mm-hmm. i don't care for it anymore so i sold it okay so this is something that's been on my mind okay so why slow on the female of Tokyo? Like. What's your username origin story? So there's <laughs> uh freaking what was it? Mm. I have at the time I was super into uh Joey the anime man and mm-hmm. Tony the black critic guy, but their usernames is the anime man is the anime man and uh the black critic guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't want people asking me what my name is. Mm-hmm. So I just put it in the title <laughs> i was like i, I thought you know, I, like, I thought you were gonna say you got it from courage the cowardly dog like, what hmm? no i don't know i don't know i thought that i thought that was gonna be the like inspiration for your name i don't remember is, is oh there... wait because oh because i see what i see now i was gonna say there was sloan and courage the cowardly dog <laughs> i've never seen the show i've never seen it so i wouldn't know but i just thought i don't know Okay. Uh, yeah, no, just my name is Sloan. I'm I'm a woman, and uh, I'm an otaku. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone straight up. You know, nice. no, no other questions. Yep. Have, have you ever thought about changing the username? No, never. <laughs> okay, that's that answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like some people will still ask me, like, oh, what what's your name? Is your like your name actually Sloan? And I'm like, yeah, my name's actually Sloan. It's on, my, it's on my birth certificate and everything. And then you also have some people who are being dicks and just like, oh, is she actually a female? I'm like, yes. Oh my god, yeah, yeah those yes, people. Yes, I am. <laughs> are, are, there, are there any, like, shortened nicknames for Sloan, or does everyone just call you Sloan? No, it's just Sloan. Oh. I mean, so, some of my fans will, will say, like, Sloan Sama or Sloan Sensei, or Sloan Onesan, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, it's just Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you would get Senpai a lot, too. I used to, but I mm-hmm. uh, way way long ago. I was like, I thought I found that very annoying. So I was like, if you're gonna call me Sloan something, it better be like Sloan Summer. So <laughs> I'm for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> oh my god. god, I'm not. I can't be bothered. <laughs> so like, okay, it, there's a friend of mine and a friend of Jay's as well. She's in, 
Jay's server. And um, she looked through her analytics when we were in a voice chat once, and she found some really disturbing stuff when we like, age and gender. Like, it was just, oh. it was really funny, the, like, age and gender of her audience. Do you hmm. look at that stuff and think anything of it? I haven't looked at that sort of thing. Like, the demographics <laughs> okay. in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, that's not something I keep up with. I, I honestly can't remember the last time I saw but mm. I know, uh, from memory, way more guys follow me than girls, and most of them are between the ages of 24 and 35. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's 65 plus, then they're kids. They're just using their parents. <laughs> oh, yeah, now. for sure. Like, there's I, I know this from mind. when I was mm -hmm. making Monster High videos. Like, it said that mo most of my viewers are 65, and I was like, oh, okay, they're like me. They're just borrowing the parents' account. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know when you're making like anime videos and stuff like that, like there's been a lot of issues with copyright stuff. Have you ever found yourself like having issues like that with like when you're posting anime content? Uh, so this day I've never had a strike, mm -hmm. but I do get claims, but they're on the old videos like from mm -hmm. before 2016. Mm -hmm. So every so often I'll get a notification with like three copyright claims on, uh, on a video that's old as hell. So I'm like, yes, whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's never a strike okay well that's good um so if that's the case like if for example if you if one of your latest videos got a, like a claim or something uh, do you do you bother to go back and like redo some stuff or take some stuff and then re-upload it or you're just like yeah it's whatever um it's like I'm sorry. Hold up. Like, you're wondering if I if I upload a video and I'm just like, oh, it's not that good. Let me re-upload it or something. Oh, here. L let me let me rephrase. Like, like for example, if you would upload like a video and it got claimed um, because you had content there or some random bot claimed it because you know s s for some mm -hmm. reason that happens, and then you're like, oh well, I I can't monetize this anymore. Um, do you ever? Are you like? What's your view on that? Are you like, um, oh, well, I guess it's whatever. Just going to leave it as is. Or do you um, go back to the, that video and re-edit everything, then re-upload everything? Oh, uh, I think I've only done that twice. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have a, a, a system. So it would happen with my cosplay music videos. Mm -hmm. uh, the song will get copyrighted. But that hasn't happened to me for a very long time because I first upload the song itself privately huh, onto YouTube. Okay. I mm -hmm. wait a couple of minutes. If it gets claimed, scrap that, choose a different song. If not, we're good. Let's use that song for uh, the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'll just start editing from there. So it's not like I wasted my time. <laughs> right. So you do like a little test first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a smart idea. Yep. It's really saved my <laughs> ass. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably start doing that too. Me too. Yeah. Like, does your video performances um, on any of your videos, does it ever dictate what you want to make or keep making? Uh, yeah, you know, like, there's there's some videos where I'm just all like, okay, I can probably, I don't need, like, so much reviews for this. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need to keep on making that much anime reviews. Or, like, when there's a, a new waifu on, on FGO, I'm just like, okay, I know that's going to get a shit ton of views. Plus, I want that waifu, so let me go ahead and uh, stream that, because that's going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was, one time, this was like in April, I was trying to get into Arknights, because uh, everyone was talking about Arknights, but I, I just couldn't. I wasn't feeling the game, and <laughs> yeah. the, the, I wasn't getting that many views anyway, so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, well, we're going to stop with the Arknights Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I moved back on to trying to bring back Let's Plays to Faker in order. And those were getting a fair amount of views, but I just mm -hmm. wasn't feeling it. So I was like, nah, I don't want to do Let's Plays anymore. I, th I think I'm just fine with just streaming uh, my roles for the waifus. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Does it, does it feel like um, kind of like, like a chore when you do Let's Plays? Because I know for, for some people, it, it always, it, sometimes if they do it constantly, it can just, or if they play a game that they're not really into, it just feels like a chore. But then your audience expects more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. It, mm -hmm. Like, um, what was it? Because I, I used to get, when I stopped making fake run order Let's Plays, mm -hmm. uh, people were wondering where, where they were at. But I, was just, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, 
I'm just going to keep on making whatever the heck I feel like making. <laughs> <laughs> I think, that's, I think that's the best approach to take mm-hmm. to this. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, as you're doing more videos and stuff, you know, you're you're obviously going to get bigger and stuff, and eventually you're going to get to that point where you make enough of income from YouTube where you're kind of debating whether you want to go full-time or, or not. Like, if you ever get to a point where you make more than enough um, to live off of that uh, for that month or for that year, uh, do you, would you ever consider doing YouTube as a full-time thing? Or do you think it's too risky? Or do you kind of prefer just have both your normal job and YouTube? So, actually, back when... Uh... I went to college for a year Mm -hmm. and this was 2016 and I was making, I only had 10,000 subscribers, but I was already making uh, like 120 a month. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm moving up pretty fast. So Mm -hmm. I talked about it with uh, Arcata actually. I was like, Hey, when did, when did you decide to make like YouTube your full-time job? And and so he, he let me know what he was making at the time. And he, he noticed that like things were going up for him. So, uh, and, and he went full time pretty early on with his channel as well. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? I, I think I'll do the same. So I didn't like college anyway. So I was mm-hmm. like, so I dropped out and I was going to pursue YouTube full time. But unfortunately, it was awful timing because that's when the ad apalypse happened. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's so, too risky, uh, though, to do y- that? Yeah. Like, like now, now it's, it is. Mm-hmm. Ever since the ad apocalypse, like I don't make as much money as I did when I even had ten thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. Uh, just recently, a month here or there, I will get like a nice hefty paycheck, but like a hundred twenty isn't enough to live on, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, I I make way more off Patreon donations, mm-hmm. which has been helping me a lot throughout this whole quarantine thing. That's good. Uh yeah, but I don't really see myself making a living off of it anymore uh, if the ad apocalypse never happened then yes i definitely would be just fine i probably would have had my own place by now especially with the amount of subscribers that i have mm-hmm. but not not anymore it's too late now dang that that mm-hmm. must suck or you must feel like very upset with that then yeah i mean i'm fine with dropping out of college because i hated it but like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah the the fact that like my goal was to make a living off of youtube so early on and then just have it crash down just yeah it's like wow i see what i honestly saw what could have happened and mm-hmm. uh, that uh, that's not what happened so <laughs> like mm-hmm. if that's the case like you have patreon all that kind of stuff did you have you ever just like thought about um moving into a different platform um since all this is happening, like Twitch, for example? Uh, I've considered Twitch for sure. And mm-hmm. some of my friends have also moved to Twitch because YouTube mm-hmm. has screwed them over way too many times. Um, but they all had copyright strikes and I've never had a copyright strike. Mm-hmm. But I was like, if I were to move to tri- Twitch, my um, FGO content would certainly pop off there for sure. As mm-hmm. for everything else, I don't really know, which is why I still stick with YouTube. Mm-hmm. Cause, you Plus, know, I mm-hmm. I'm almost at 40k. Like, I don't wanna I don't wanna lose all that and start from the beginning. <laughs> right. Did Did you ever debate like doing Twitch and YouTube at the same time or anything like that? Uh, I did for a hot second mm-hmm. back when my uh, fake Renato Let's Plays were really taking off. Mm-hmm. So, because mm-hmm. some people were complaining, they're just like, "Hey, Sloan, I subscribe to you for anime content, not all the spam of FGO streams. Have you thought about like maybe just separating the two? Maybe go to Twitch or something." Mm-hmm. And I thought about it for a hot second and I was like, nah, I kind of want everything to be in the same place. If you don't like it, you, you can feel free to leave um, mm-hmm. or you could just stick around for the content that you do want because it, it'll still be here, but mm-hmm. it'll be mixed in with the FGO streams. And now yeah. look, I'm a variety anti-tuber uploading whatever the heck I want, so it's fine. I'm doing okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you deal with criticism if, if, you, if you get comments like that? Do you... Do you try not to let it bother you? Because you seem very optimistic, so I'm assuming, you know, mm-hmm. you just brush that off. But does do you ever get comments that kind of get under your skin? Uh are you talking are we talking about hate comments or actual criticisms? Uh well, I guess I guess more of the criticism than hate comments. Almost I I don't get criticisms that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh uh if if it's something negative, it's usually more of a hate comment mm-hmm. that'll try to pass themselves off as a criticism. Uh, like, like there was this one guy, it was so weird. 
he was uh making this whole ah, it was weird like i made a video talking about uh interspecies reviewers <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, and how I oddly enjoyed it in the end. So mm-hmm. hard to get through like the first seven episodes. Mm-hmm. And so he makes this whole paragraph of a comment. And he he ends it off by saying, basically, I know you're I know you're asexual and all, but this didn't seem to bother you as much. So try to expand your horizons. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like. I don't like how you worded that, sir. Are you saying that my asexuality does not exist? Like, <laughs> really pissed off by that. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was, and so I, t- I, I, I screenshotted that and I tweeted it. I'm like, I can't tell if this guy is trying to say that my asexuality doesn't exist, but maybe I should mm-hmm. let him know that I got into anime through the etchy genre or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just like really annoyed it's, by it's that a, guy. Is it the same guy that makes yearly I hate slow videos? I don't know. You know, he changes his username every year, so that's why I have. <laughs> I don't know if he's done his yearly Sloan video for the past few years or not. I don't know. Oh man, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Yeah, the last time I saw his username, I, I it went by something like I think it was like Sao King or something like oh, that. Oh my god! So, yeah, okay. of course, Sao King, of course. It's because only real kings watch Sao. Mm-hmm. Of course. That's why I watch it. Oh, man. <laughs> So when you do videos, like, how do you decide what to make next? Oh, no. Uh, honestly, I just wait to see what pops up in my mind. I don't mm-hmm. force anything. Oh, you don't like, follow, I'll like, be watching... trends or anything? No, uh, like, I'll be watching dishes, and then a topic pops up in my head, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's a good idea. Let me write this down. And if mm-hmm. the topic is still on my mind uh, for that day or multiple days, then I'll uh, write my thoughts down and turn it into a script. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So, like, how 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 many times do you find yourself like trashing a video because of uh it, you think it's not good enough? Uh, quite a bit actually. The the mm-hmm. most recent one that I well, there's one I put on hold, so mm-hmm. it's not trashed. Um, but like I was making a, a I was working on this on a script for a Boku no Hero villain psychoanalysis. Mm-hmm. and i read the manga and the most recent chapter of the manga i was like "Ooh, let me um let me hold off on the psychoanalysis <laughs> yeah, till yes. the arc is finished because yeah. there's a lot going on in the arc right mm-hmm. now so i'm just like let yeah. me hold off <laughs> there's still more development clearly happening for the villains let me just wait I- i'm scared for it oh <laughs> like like I- i've been reading it and i read the new chapter the other day yeah. and I'm i'm scared yeah, yeah, we oh, all man. are. I kind of stopped what or kind of stopped reading the manga like after, I guess, kind of where the anime stopped. So I have okay. no idea what's going on after that. If you have yeah. the time, I definitely recommend picking it back up. Mm-hmm. So, seems like um, you've been pretty busy then. Oh yeah, like with everything that's going on. Um, do you have like any plans for the future in terms of your channel? uh well since we just did the rebranding just mm-hmm. i want more uh I'm, I'm looking forward to making more content on cartoons mm-hmm. but the next one i have planned is for uh why you should watch infinity train which i'm so excited to work on but i gotta wait what's for the infinity last two train? episodes i'm sorry what's infinity train it's a uh, it's a really really good cartoon is it uh, like thanos goes on the railway <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but uh, <laughs> it is a sci- <laughs> it's a sci-fi uh, mystery thriller, and it's very okay. mature. I love it so much. It's really well done. Uh, the, they're currently on season three, and uh, the last two episodes come out tomorrow. So after those two episodes, I'm going to start working on the video, and it's going to be awesome. Are you, are you going to like, cover more cartoon stuff, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah that's the goal. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Have you ever thought about like doing comic books or any of that kind of stuff, or were you never into that kind of stuff? I used to be into comic books when I was in middle school, but I haven't mm-hmm. kept up with it since I was like sixteen. Mm-hmm. Have Have you ever done any videos on any like live action TV and movie stuff? I have actually. Uh, they did all right. You know, I uh, uh, I made a top five live action anime adaptations. 
uh, I made a review on the Death Note live action, the American one. But I also made a review on the the newer Death Note live action TV show, which was like a J drama, I think. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that one. Yeah. Mm. And then I was invited to an exclusive screening for The Foreigner, which was Jackie Chan's comeback film a couple that's, years back. That's uh, kind of random. Yeah, but it was because because <laughs> this mm-hmm. was for uh, YouTube Studio New York. Oh, okay. so I got invited mm-hmm. to that. Uh, I met the credentials, so uh, I I got to go see it, and I did a review, and I also got to meet Jackie Chan, which is awesome. Oh, I had nice. a picture with him. Yeah. Well, that, that'd be it for live action stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have any other questions on your mind, Ducky, that you want to ask her? So, thank you, Sloane, for um, coming onto the podcast. I feel like yeah, we have a better understanding of like what. It's to be like Annie tubers, an Annie, no. yeah, to be an Annie tuber, even though I try to be one, but you know, I just, I don't know, I just can't get into it, I guess. But you've trapped yourself in the hole of yonder content. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like that. Wait, we gotta start somewhere. Bit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so do you have like anything you want to plug in, like your social media, where we can find you, follow you, any upcoming yeah, things? First off, um, thank you guys so much for inviting me. This was super, super mm-hmm. cool um yeah you can follow me uh well of course you know subscribe over to my youtube channel mm-hmm. at sloan the female otaku and then i have my instagram for my cosplay which is also sloan the female otaku and then i have my uh twitter and tiktok which is at sloan the otaku so not sloan the female otaku but sloan the otaku mm-hmm. and on my twitter i uh, often ask my fans uh you know what videos they'd like to see next and uh also sometimes their tweets will end up in my next videos if i'm like wondering like hey who are like the top 10 simps in anime and then they'll uh <laughs> nice. they'll, yeah they'll, they'll they'll give me like their list and i'll screenshot it you know and i'll use it for an upcoming video uh so we're very interactive on twitter definitely recommend me following them there and mm-hmm. uh on uh tiktok i make all sorts of content from funny anime related stuff to uh cosplay content uh mm-hmm. and uh yeah yeah that's really, really, really much it. yeah i, I, I nice. do have one last question um mm-hmm. why did you say yes to coming on here <laughs> Uh, cause, so when people ask me to collab with them, the first thing I do is I see their subscriber count to make sure that they're not fools begging for, like, a higher person's, like, attention. (laughs) So I, I saw, I saw you guys got account. I'm like, okay, these guys are legit. They're not fools. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And and your, and your letter was cool. You, you weren't straight up, like. Mm-hmm. Like most people's like business emails are absolute trash. Your yours was fine. Like you guys know how to write a business email, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, really thanks. professional, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I try. Yes. I try. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So once again, thank you, Sloan, for being on this episode of the Annie Book Podcast. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank um. You. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> As for you listeners, I hope you've enjoyed and make sure you stick around because next week we'll have another episode for you. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Bye,